Hey y'all, N4H and H here with the Yaesu FTM 500D. I want to show you what I believe might be my favorite feature in this radio. And it's called Primary Memory Group, PMG here on this button. Let me zoom in. Okay, you see the button here labeled PMG. You just toggle it on and off by pressing the button. So now we're back in normal mode, monitoring two different frequencies because you have two different uh, receivers, VFOs. It's just another layer of memory. So I've got a lot of memories programmed in here, as you see. And I have tags, you know, where the repeater is located. If it's a repeater, I also have simplex frequencies. And... Uh, I'll show how to do the tags in another video, by the way. Don't worry. So the way this primary memory group works is you program in memories. And then all you have to do to load your favorites into the primary memory group is long press. It says PW. That means you're going to write. Just like over here, there's your VFO mode or memory mode. And then there's memory write, MW. Well, this writes to the primary memory group. I've already got mine filled up, so I'm going to tap and show you. But all you do is just go through here and select them and then long press. And it keeps adding them in the order that you've selected them. You can, through the big menu, which is the function knob, just long press the function knob. And you can scroll down through here. There it is, PMG. PMG clear, you can clear them out if you want to start over. All right, just wanted you to know about that. All right, so I'm going to engage it. You simply tap. All right, and right now uh, I can take the big knob and I can decide which one of those frequencies I would like to transmit on. It's monitoring them all. Now, an another th thing about that is the one that I have highlighted. So to think of it this way, you're monitoring five frequencies simultaneously. Now you will only hear audio from the one that you have selected here with the little orange highlight. So if a signal comes up, either on the one you're listening to right now, which I'm listening to my friend Pete's uh, Bisky Mountain repeater, powerhouse of a repeater here in North Georgia. He's got another one on 443-100 and I've got it in the second slot here. But right now I'm listening for audio on the first one here, the two meter repeater. And then I also have for P3, it's just when you program them in, it just puts them in these slots that are labeled P1 through P5. So for P3, um, uh, I put in 146.490. That is a local simplex frequency here in uh, North Metro Atlanta that a lot of us monitor. And we, we work, in fact, we don't really get on the repeaters much. Repeat, uh, repeater. Re Pete's repeaters, easy for you to say, Doug. Pete's repeaters are the ones we tend to use in my soda circles. Some it's on the air because his repeaters get out so well. And if we're up on a mountain or something and we need help, we'll go there. But many of us, oh, did you see that? So somebody just transmitted and you see the bar graph go up, that signal strength and it was full scale. So many of us here monitor peach repeaters in case we get into a jam, you know, like in the mountains, and that has happened. And then locally, we'll chat on two-meter simplex, 146.49, and a lot of people around here have base station antennas and even monitor 146.490 when mobile. I also have 146.520 in there, you know, that's the, the calling frequency for two meters. And then I have 446.000 in there, which is the calling frequency for 70 centimeters. One of the guys in North Georgia called CQ a few minutes ago on 446.000 while I was monitoring 146.835 here. But I saw the signal pop up and you can scroll over there and see who it is. Whichever one you got the selector on, that's the one you'll hear audio for. But now let me show you another little twist and why I even heard him call CQ. No kidding. Yeah. And I've said this in the previous videos in this series. I'm still flying by the seat of my pants learning this radio. I have not cracked a manual yet. Why? Because 
once you've programmed a Yesu, whether it be an HT, a mobile, HF rig, whatever, you learn their menu system and it's the same but different on all of them. So a lot of it has to do with these knobs and buttons to having multiple uses depending on whether you're tapping them or long pressing them, things like that. So if I, this is the VFO knob, the big knob here, if I long press it, watch what happens says manual. Now I'm in manual PMG mode, which means that if somebody transmits on P5, 446000 in this case, uh, well, I won't hear them, but I'll see the meter move up. Now, if you've got a Yaesu FT3DR or an FT5DR HT, and you may have seen my videos of mine, I've talked about this, it has this same ability. You can have it listening on one, but let you know if there's a signal on any of the others, and then you can move over there. You just tap the screen, and you can do that on here too, but you just move over there, and you can start talking on that frequency. But as soon as you tap it, you'll hear you know, what they're saying. But this has another twist. If I long press this big knob again, now it says auto. So what happened a while ago was I was monitoring 146.835. See, again, I can choose whichever one. Kevin, that was the station uh, up in Jasper, Georgia, he called CQ on 446.000, which is incredibly rare, by the way. Glad to hear somebody doing that, and we had a quick QSO on it. When he did, instead of it just showing me the bar graph, it showed me the bar graph and moved over and allowed me to hear his audio. So that's what auto does. Auto means whatever you're monitoring, that's cool. But if somebody starts talking on one of these other four of your primary memory group frequencies, it'll just automatically move over there and, and allow you to hear the audio. Again, now if I long press again, this is a toggle. If I long press again, I'm back in manual mode. So I would not hear him over here on P5, 446.000, but I would see the meter move up to show his signal strength, which, you know, he's a long ways off. Oddly enough, he didn't move the meter up a whole lot, but he sounded full quieting. DFQ, as my friend Pete says, uh, dead full quieting. But uh, in this, this radio so far, I have been very, very impressed with the uh, receiver in it. And uh, I should mention a freebie here, nothing related to the PMG, but it has this feature up here called S-DX. You know, Yesu, they got to come up with a clever term for uh, for something, and this one is Super DX. It just adds more sensitivity to the receiver. Don't use that unless you need it, because you know when you add more sensitivity, you make it more susceptible to interference, noise even. But it does have that ability S dash DX up there. It just means, and, and you can. But by the way, it just you, if you are, let's say you got a repeater that's way out there, and they're coming in S three or so. You tap that and they may bump up to S5 or 6, something like that. So you add more sensitivity. But he came up to about that first bar, I think it was there, but I heard him just fine. And because I was in auto mode, it automatically switched over there so that I could hear him. So that was really cool. I'm really, really enjoying that particular feature. This radio is probably going to end up in my truck mobile, and I'll probably run it in this mode most of the time. Anyway, just wanted you to know about the primary memory group feature, PMG. And again, remember, program your your uh, repeaters in there, your simplex frequencies, everything that you're going to want to put in there. Like I said, I've got another video to show you how to tag them if you want. And then long press them in the order that you want them to appear in here. So if you want the 146835 first, long press the PMG PW key until you hear the beep. And it will become P1 and then go to the next one you want and it'll become P2. And again, don't forget, if you long press the menu, the function knob, you go into the menu, look for menu 22, PMG, tap, and you can move down and see here's where you can clear the, the PMG registers, if you will. And so and there's a timer setting too. I'm leaving it on default, you know. So uh, anyway, there you go. But flying by the seat of my pants, hey, cool. And hit back key to get out of that. All right, thanks for watching videos on my channel. Please do me one more favor and hang around for a half a minute. I want to recognize five of the Patreon team long haulers. 
These are members of the Patreon team who fund this channel. Without them, the channel doesn't exist. And these are the ones who fund it on a yearly basis. And there are a few who are now at over three years of support for the channel. Without them, the channel would have gone down in 2021 before I even shot the FTDX 10 series. And even these series are only, only possible because of people who are generous enough to donate a radio for me to do video about. I can't go out and just buy every radio that comes out. You can imagine that. And in this case, this radio was donated by Jonathan, uh, W5GI. Thank you, Jonathan. He definitely made this video possible because of that. And these other Patreon team members who I'm going to recognize here at the end of the video are the reason that I'm still around long enough that Jonathan even found me. So thanks so much to the long haulers who contribute yearly through the Patreon program. 73, and thanks for watching videos on my channel.